हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम रूज अहमद खान वर्किंग एज टीचिंग असिस्टेंट इन डेली इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेज एंड रिसर्च इन दिस मॉड्यूल विल डील विद एक्सीपियंट्स फॉर सॉलिड डोसेज फॉर्म्स एंड फॉर कोटिंग अंडर पेपर प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट वन द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर टू स्टडी अबाउट डिफरेंट एक्सीपियंट्स यूज इन सॉलिड डोसेज फॉर्म टू स्टडी अबाउट डिफरेंट मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्सीपियंट्स टू स्टडी अबाउट फॉर्मुलेशन स्ट्रेटजीज फॉर बी सी एस ड्रग्स टू स्टडी इन डिटेल अबाउट डिफरेंट एक्सीपियंट्स यूज फॉर कोटिंग सॉलिड डोसेज फॉर्म्स नाउ विल स्टार्ट विद एक्सीपियंट्स फॉर कन्वेंशनल ओरल सॉलिड डोसेज फॉर्म्स ड्रग प्रोडक्ट इज मोस्ट फ्रीकुंटली एडमिनिस्टर्ड ओरली इन सॉलिड डोसेज फॉर्म्स विच इंक्लूड्स टैबलेट्स कोटेड डोसेज फॉर्म्स कैप्स्यूल्स ट्रॉचेज लॉजेंजेस एंड ओरल फॉर्मुलेशन कैन नॉट बी सिंपली मेड यूजिंग एन ए पी आई मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द फॉर्मुलेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ एक्सीपियंट्स विच इंक्लूड डाइलुएंट्स बाइंडर्स डिस इंटीग्रेंट्स ग्लाइडेंट्स एंड ल्यूब्रिकेंट्स फर्स्ट स्टार्ट विद डाइलुएंट्स Usually the dose of API is small and thus an inert substance needs to be added to increase the bulk of the formulation so as to make it easier for compression during manufacturing operation diluents may also be added for secondary reasons as well improves cohesion to provide better tabulating properties to permit direct compression of excipients and to promote flow Several types of diluents are available, such as microcrystalline cellulose, which is uh, branded as Evicel, starch, mannitol, which is branded as Manogen, lactose dicalcium phosphate, branded as Encompress, kaolin, calcium sulfate. However, while developing a new dosage form for the drug substance, its compatibility with the diluents should be considered, as it might have a deleterious effect. if found incompatible the most common example to illustrate this possibility is that of calcium salts with tetracycline calcium salts if used as diluent for the antibiotic tetracycline interferes with its adsorption and gastrointestinal tract similarly amine salts if combined with lactose in the presence of an alkaline lubricant such as magnesium stearate leads to color discoloration in the tablets on storage the reactions may also take place between the components which are tightly compressed in a tablet for example substances which can form eutectic mixtures if compressed together in a tablet can soften it and hence making the tablet unacceptable another important consideration in using diluents for tablet formulation is the form in which the diluents are available Diluents which exist in the common salt forms as hydrates contain bound water as water of crystallization which makes it unsuitable for water sensitive drugs provided that the water of crystallization is not released under elevated storage conditions to which product is exposed diluents such as dibasic calcium phosphate and calcium sulfate are most suitable for the formulation of tablet dosage forms of water sensitive drugs as they possess low concentrations of unbound moisture and also have low affinity for the atmospheric moisture diluents may also serve other purpose in the same formulation for example corn starch is used as binder in paste form and as disintegrant in suspension form now moving towards binders and adhesives binders are the agents which impart cohesiveness to the dosage form and ensure they remain intact after compaction further improves the free flowing ability due to the formation of granules of appropriate size and hardness some of the frequently used binders include natural and synthetic gums example sodium alginate guar gum starch gelatin carboxymethyl cellulose polyvinyl pyrrolidone hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose Multiple binders include polyethylene glycols, waxes, fatty acids and alcohols, glycerides. Alcohols and water are not originally regarded as binder, but since they produce solvent action on some components such as on lactose or starch, we change them to granules. Binders can be used either as liquid or in dry form. the amount of binding agent used has a significant influence on tablet characteristics 
too much or too hard a binding agent result in hard tablet that causes excessive wear of the punches and dies and does not disintegrate easily binding agent in solution form is more effective than the dry form this is because of the complete wetting of the particle surface with the liquid binder granulation refers to the unit operation through which small powdery particles can be agglomerated into bigger entities called granules granules formed by using binders exhibit improved flow property and also the compressibility granules have several other advantages as well such as improvement in the mixing properties and appearance reduction in the dust generation in the tableting operation densify the material and also further reduces segregation potential of the particles binders are used in all the three tableting operations that is direct compression dry granulation and wet granulation for direct compression the directly compressible binders are used which exhibit sufficient powder compressibility and flowability these are selected on the basis of flow behavior compression behavior and volume reduction under the applied pressure so as to have optimum binding performance mechanism of granule formulation as the granulating liquid is added to the powder particles it forms films at the surface of the particles which combines at the point of contact to form discrete liquid bridges the liquid bridges so formed have negative capillary pressure which provides cohesive force resulting in a pendular state with the increase in liquid content a funicular state is obtained which is caused by the coalescence of the bridges with further increase in the amount of liquid along with the kneading of the mass so formed eliminates the void spaces within the granule bringing the particles closer a capillary state is obtained due to the bonding by interfacial forces at the surface of granule and by the negative capillary pressure present in the liquid space in the interior finally a droplet is obtained in which the particles are held together by the surface tension but in the absence of intragranular forces the formation of granules depend upon several factors such as compatibility of binder with the api and other excipients properties of the drugs and the excipients like particle size and surface area compressibility hydrophobicity and several other factors the extent of spreading of binder the type quantity temperature and viscosity of the binder used and the method of the addition of binder now moving towards disintegrating agents disintegrants are added to promote the penetration of the moisture in the matrix of the dosage form resulting in its dispersion in dissolution fillers Some of the frequently used disintegrants include cellulose, cross-linked polymers, starches, gums, alkynes, clays, alkenes. Starch is the most commonly used tablet disintegrant in a concentration of 5 to 20 percent, weight by weight. Certain low substituted carboxymethyl starches, called as modified starch, have been developed, which can be used. in low concentrations of 1 to 8% example primogel and explotab starch can also be used as modified pre gelatinized starch which can be employed as disintegrant in a further low concentration of 5% a new class of disintegrants called super disintegrants have also been developed which include modified cellulose modified starch cross linked polyvinyl pyrrolidone there are several mechanisms by which disintegrants act such as wicking swelling heat of wetting repulsion deformation in wicking there is enhanced porosity and provides pathways through which liquid is drawn up by capillary action resulting in rupturing of interparticulate bonds and hence disintegration occurs in swelling disintegrants swell when they come in contact with water and overcome the adhesiveness leading to disintegration in heat of wetting disintegrants possessing exothermic properties gets wet and generates a localized stress due to capillary air extension resulting in disintegration in repulsion non swellable disintegrants draws water into the pores generating electrical forces causing repulsion of particles 
in deformation particles get deformed under pressure and swells when come in contact with water disintegrants can be added at two stages with intragranular addition and extragranular addition in intragranular refers to the addition of disintegrating agents during granules formation prior to wetting with the granulating fluid extragranular disintegrants are added at the second mixing stage during the compaction of the granules into the tablet extragranular disintegrants causes the tablet to break into granules while the intragranular disintegrants break down the granules into fine particles now moving towards glidants lubricants and anti adherents the three terms glidants lubricants and anti adherents are employed together due to their overlapping functions glidants are the substances which improve the flow properties of the powder by decreasing the friction between the particles lubricants are the agents which reduces the friction between the tablet and the dye walls during ejection of the tablet anti adherents prevents the adherence of the tablet granules or the powder to the surface of punches and dye wall tall starch magnesium stearate and various colloidal silicas possesses anti adherent properties glidants used in pharmaceutical industry includes talc 5% corn starch 5 to 10% colloidal silicas such as cabosil siloid aerosil 0.25 to 3% glidant promote the flow by lodging into the irregularities on the surface of granules reducing the interparticulate friction producing a more spherical structure colloidal silica also act as a moisture scavengers giving an added advantage to the glidant action lubricating agents serve multiple purpose in the tablet manufacturing prevent material from being adhered to the surface of the punches and dyes interparticle friction reduction facilitates tablets to eject from dye cavity and also improves the flow characteristics of granules lubricants are mostly used in a low concentration of less than 1% except talc which is used as a high concentration of 5% when used alone Lubricants can act by four mechanism with hydrodynamic lubrication elastohydrodynamic lubrication mixed lubrication and boundary lubrication which is commonly employed in pharmaceutical industry in boundary lubrication the lubricant forms layers or films between the surfaces or at interfaces to reduce friction thus penetrating itself into the asperities Lubricants possessing the boundary lubrication mechanism include long chain molecules having active end groups such as stearic acid and its metallic salts example long chain alcohol long chain amines long chain fatty acids and metal ions such as magnesium ions commonly used lubricants in pharmaceutical industry include metallic salts of fatty acids like magnesium stearate stearic acid fatty acid esters glyceride esters sugar esters and inorganic materials talc and polymers such as polyethylene glycol 4000 glyceride esters include glyceryl monoesterate glyceryl dibenzoate and glyceryl tribenzoate while sugar esters include sucrose monopalmitate and sorbitan monoesterate lubrication is a coating process thus a finer particle size is desirable to produce an optimum lubricating action however a deleterious effect can be observed with water insoluble lubricants the hydrophobic surface of the particle slows the dissolution process thus causing bioavailability problems and also the tablet structure is weakened due to the direct contact between adjacent hydrocarbon layers thus The selection of an appropriate lubricant for a tablet manufacturing process is based on several criteria including non-toxicity, chemical compatibility with APIs and other excipients in the formulation. Low shear strength should be of capable of forming a durable layer on the surface or particles. Low batch to batch variability, optimal concentration and mixing time should have minimum adverse effects. on the tablet performance 
the optimal concentration of lubricant should be used as lower concentration other than that specified and inadequate mixing can cause inefficient lubrication resulting in sticking and capping and binding in the cavity while excessive amounts of lubricants lead to tablet waterproofing resulting in inappropriate disintegration and dissolution of the api therefore selecting an appropriate lubricant is an important requisite for a formulation so as to have a desirable performance of both product and the process multifunctional excipients now the development of new drug moieties with the diverse physicochemical and stability characteristics is resulting in a necessity to develop newer excipients to achieve the desired functionalities however the development of a new excipient is relatively uneconomical as it involves high cost thus formulators are now concerned with the modification of the physicochemical properties of the already existing excipients multifunctional excipients are those that serve various purpose through a single ingredient for the development of formulation multifunctionality can be achieved by either supplementing the attributes of the excipients or the parent excipient can be co-processed with another excipient a multifunctional excipient provides several advantages in terms of formulation development manufacturing and further in marketing which are given as formulation increase rework potential smaller quantities are required flow properties can be enhanced the blending process may be improved decrease strain rate sensitivity enhanced compression ratio optimize content uniformity material handling can be facilitated improve stability and also reduce environmental concerns in manufacturing the direct compression of the tablet dosage form may be achieved thus reduce time the excipients with enhanced flow and compaction behavior increase production capacity machine wear and tablet tooling may be reduced and eliminate the facility need of solvent recovery marketing the better formulation characteristics with improved and faster manufacturing process leads to enhanced marketing potential of the dosage form some multifunctional excipients with their key components and their advantages have been depicted in the table excipients for coating solid dosage forms the second part of this module the tablet coating is a key step in the manufacturing of tablet dosage form with specific desirable properties such as controlled release or delayed release the coating is applied to the tablets to achieve one or more of the following objectives like masking the taste order and color of the api to provide the physical and chemical protection to the drug to control drug release from the tablet to provide enteric coating to the tablet so as to protect the api from the degradation in the gastric environment of the stomach to avoid chemical incompatibilities or to provide sequential release of drug by incorporating an adjuvant in the coating to enhance the pharmaceutical elegance with the use of contrast printing or special colors the coating material can be physically deposited on the tablet surface or may form a continuous layer of film an ideal film coating material should possess the following attributes it should be soluble in the solvent of choice to be used for coating it should have the desirable solubility for the intended use example ph dependent solubility for enteric coating it should produce a formulation with elegant appearance it should be stable in the presence of environmental conditions such as air moisture heat and light it should be compatible with common coating solution additives it should be non toxic ease of application to the tablets it should be resistant to cracking and should have a sufficient barrier to the entry of moisture or light or air no bridging or filling of debossed tablet surface by the film polymer the very first part under this section is biopharmaceuticals classification system 
and coating requirements. US Food and Drug Administration that is FDA has published several guidelines for the in vitro or in vivo correlations of immediate release and extended release dosage forms so as to facilitate regulatory submissions for generic drugs and also for post approval changes. As per FDA guidance for the industry document, dissolution profiles of a drug serve as a sensitive, reliable and reproducible surrogate to ensure bioequivalence. Therefore, the pharmaceutical excipients used in the preparation of dosage form have to provide consistency in the dissolution profile of the API. Additionally, FDA has also published the Biopharmaceutics Classification System offering general guidance regarding how the products could qualify for biowaiver, thus enabling pharmaceutical industries to avoid some in vivo bioavailability and bioequivalence studies. BCS classifies drugs into four classes. Class 1, drugs have high aqueous solubility and high permeability. Class 2 drugs have low solubility and high membrane permeability. Class 3 drugs have high aqueous solubility and low membrane permeability. Class 4 drugs have low aqueous solubility and low membrane permeability. Excipients with specific characteristics can be purposefully employed to optimize drug delivery. However, the challenge is in the compatibility of drug with the excipients so as to achieve desired pharmacokinetic profile of the pharmaceutical dosage form. API can be formulated as immediate release or sustained release dosage form, altering the delivery profiles of drug product. Immediate release dosage form produces rapid onset of drug action while the sustained release formulations provide prolonged and less fluctuating drug plasma level thereby minimizing toxicity and side effects associated with the drug. The physicochemical and pharmacokinetic characteristics of the drug influence the type of dosage form that could be formulated for the drug. Furthermore, site-specific delivery systems such as enteric coated system can also be developed to ensure highest therapeutic efficacy. Class 1 drugs are readily released from the dosage forms and dissolve in the small intestine and are efficiently absorbed across the intestinal epithelium, thus are anticipated to minimize variation in oral absorption. Therefore, class 1 drugs can be formulated in sustained and immediate release dosage forms, with the exception of those which undergo extensive first pass metabolism. More variations and lower bioavailability of drugs may be observed if the sustained release of drug is below the level of saturating the intestinal and hepatic first past enzymes. Class 2 drugs have the limitation of low aqueous solubility, thus limiting the drug absorption. The excipients that can increase the aqueous solubility of the API can be used to strategically enhance the oral absorption of class 2 drugs. Class 3 drugs have reduced intestinal absorption, leading to higher variations and thus limiting the choice of sustained release formulations for BCS class 3 drugs. Class 4 drugs are not the good candidates for sustained release formulations because of the poor aqueous solubility and lower membrane permeability. Suitable formulation strategies that can be applied to the four classes in BCS is summarized in figure shown on the screen. Thus, the excipients can also serve the purpose of enhancing drug dissolution and membrane permeation in a dosage form. Now moving to excipients used in sustained release formulations. Extended release dosage form as per USP is one which allows at least a two-fold decrease in dosing frequency or an increase in the therapeutic performance of the dosage form when compared to the conventional dosage form. The terms such as sustained release, prolonged release, control release and long acting are the synonyms for the extended release dosage forms. Sustained release delivery systems are the drug delivery systems which when administered in a single dose prolongs the therapeutic effect of the medication by continuously releasing it over extended period of time. 
under sustained release matrix sustained release matrices can be a single tablet or multiple small sustained release tablets may be housed inside an external coating in the sustained release matrix dosage form the drug molecule is dispersed or embedded in the matrix of sustained release materials which may be compressed in a tablet form or encapsulated in a particulate form the factors determining rate of drug release from a matrix dosage form are permeation of matrix by water erosion of matrix drug leaching from the matrix these matrices may be prepared by erodible or insoluble materials drug release from the matrix follows higochi release kinetics which states that the drug release per unit surface area at time t depends on drug diffusion coefficient in elution medium totosity and porosity of the matrix drug solubility in the elution medium and the initial loading dose of the drug in the matrix materials used to form matrix tablets are classified into three types insoluble inert materials which include polyvinyl chloride peg insoluble erodible materials such as sterile alcohol carnauba wax castor wax hydrophilic materials including methyl cellulose sodium carboxymethyl cellulose hpmc and several others the rate limiting step in controlling drug release from insoluble inert polymers is penetration of liquid into the matrix wetting agents included into the matrix allow drug dissolution and diffusion through the channels created in the matrix due to the wetting agents waxes and lipids control drug release through pore diffusion and erosion thus release characteristics of such systems are more dependent on the digestive fluid composition polyacrylic acid is the most widely used matrix for sustained release formulations available as carbomer 910 934 934p 940 941 971p and 974p polymers of acrylic acid which are cross linked with polyalkenyl ethers or divinyl glycol are called as carbopol polymers without cross linkers the polymers will exist as linear chains which will be intertwined but not chemically bonded carbopol polymers contains 56% to 68% of carboxylic acid when exposed to intestinal fluid it swell and form hydrogel like structures which release drug molecules in a controlled manner moving to sustained release film coatings sustained release film coating can be applied to several dosage forms the important prerequisite for the api to be formulated as a sustained release formulation is that it should not undergo extensive first pass metabolism two types of membranes can be formed using sustained release film coatings permeable membrane and semi permeable membrane the permeable membrane is the one which allows the intestinal fluid to enter the formulation dissolve the drug and allow it to permeate out through the membrane of the dosage form they are permeable to both the intestinal fluid and the drug molecules however semi permeable membranes permeate only the intestinal fluid and are impermeable to dissolve drug molecules rate of drug release through a permeable membrane depends upon several factors such as membrane thickness drug solubility in intestinal fluid concentration gradient of drug across the membrane drug diffusion coefficient through the membrane dosage form surface area and the drug particles materials capable of forming a permeable membrane include fats and waxes cetyl esteryl alcohol cetyl alcohol zine silicon elastomers and ethyl cellulose aqueous dispersions of hydrophobic polymers are generally used to provide sustained release film coatings examples include aqueous polymer dispersion of ethyl cellulose available with the brand name aqua coat various acrylates such as eudragit rs 30d eudragit rl 30d Eudragit NE30D plasticizers such as PEG diethyl phthalate triacetin can be used with eudragits so as to reduce glass transition temperatures of eudragit films most common example of system utilizing semi permeable membrane is that of osmotic pumps 
water is allowed to enter the tablet matrix through the semi permeable membrane due to the osmotic pressure build up in the system preventing permeation of drug substance across the membranes drug is delivered through the orifice at the membrane bcs class 1 and class 2 drugs are the best suited candidates to formulate as osmotic tablets polyvinyl alcohol ethyl cellulose and cellulose acetate are examples of the materials used to make the semi permeable membranes moving to coprecipitates coprecipitation refers to a phenomena where a solute unlike in solutions precipitates out on a carrier which overcomes its dispersibility and forces it to bind together coprecipitates formed using pharmaceutical excipients are an attractive strategy to control drug release coprecipitates of ibuprofen with acrylate polymers eutrogates have been developed by researchers ibuprofen belongs to bcs class 1 which has the high solubility and membrane permeability for it to be orally absorbed completely coprecipitates deters drug release rates with no significant interactions being observed between ibuprofen and eutrogate eutrogate swell and slowly dissolve which slows the release of ibuprofen moving towards film formers Film coating of solid dosage forms is a highly sophisticated process firstly described in 1930 film coatings are applied for the following reasons taste masking and moisture or light protecting coatings improved product appearance improved mechanical resistance of the coated product example reduced friability modified drug release example gastric resistant or extended release coating The polymer for film coating may be classified as protective or functional coating based on their origin of preparation film forming polymers can be classified as natural semi synthetic or synthetic polymers natural polymers are subjected to several purification steps and then used as such without any chemical modification semi synthetic polymers are derived after the chemical modification of natural substances example cellulose derivatives synthetic polymers are completely chemically synthesized polymers example methacrylic acid copolymers based on the function they perform film coating polymers can be classified as those which are used for protective coating and those which impart functional coating starting with protective coatings protective coatings are applied with several objectives such as taste or odor masking improving stability of moisture sensitive products for improving the mechanical resistance of product during handling they remain intact for a short period of time of swallowing the dosage form and then dissolve instantaneously to cause the immediate drug release without retardation some polymers for film coating are summarized as firstly ethyl cellulose ethyl cellulose is obtained by the reaction of cellulose dissolved in NaOH with ethyl sulfate or ethyl chloride different viscosity grades of ethyl cellulose are available depending on the degree of ethoxy substitution it is insoluble in water and git fluids it produces films of low water solubility on combination with hpmc Aqueous polymeric dispersions of ethyl cellulose have been developed by Banker and co-workers from Purdue University. There are a type of pseudo latex systems as high solids and low viscosity compositions. It is commercially available in the name of Aqua Coat by FMC Corporation. Secondly, hydroxy ethyl cellulose It is a partially substituted polyhydroxyethyl ether of cellulose. It occurs as a white, yellowish white or grayish white tasteless odorless hygroscopic powder. Several viscosity grades are available with varying dispersion in water. It is used as coating agent, thickening agent, suspending agent, viscosity increasing agent and tablet binder. Aqueous solutions of hydroxyethyl cellulose are less stable below pH 5 because of the hydrolysis while at high pH they may undergo oxidation. Glyoxal treated hydroxyethyl cellulose should not be used for oral pharmaceutical preparations 
or for topical formulations that can be used on mucous membranes. Its use in parenteral products is also not recommended. Moving to hydroxypropyl cellulose, it is a partially substituted polyhydroxypropyl ether of cellulose available in different grades with the molecular weight in the range of 50,000 to 12 lakh 50,000. It is used as a coating agent, stabilizing agent, emulsifying agent, suspending agent, thickening agent, tablet binder and viscosity increasing agent. HPC in a concentration range of 15 to 35 percent W by W is used to produce extended drug release formulations. The rate of a drug release increases with the decrease in the viscosity of HPC. The tableting characteristics can be improved using the blends of HPC with other cellulosic polymers. HPC at 5% weight by weight concentration is used as film coating materials. HPC has been listed in grass list in non-parenteral medicines licensed in the UK and in Canadian list of acceptable non-medicinal ingredients. Also acceptable as a food additive in Europe. Now, Hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose HPMC is a partly O methylated and O2 hydroxypropylated cellulose. HPMC is the most versatile excipient in pharmaceutical industry, serving a range of purposes such as coating agent, bioadhesive material, control release agent, emulsifying agent, suspending agent, dispersing agent, emulsion stabilizer, dissolution enhancer extended release agent, film forming agent, granulation aid, foaming agent, mucoadhesive modified release agent, solubilizing agent, sustained release agent, thickening agent, tablet binder and viscosity increasing agent. It is used in a concentration of 2 to 5 percent weight by weight as a binder in tableting operation. In 0.25 to 5 percent as suspending or thickening agent in liquid oral dosage forms at 2 to 20 percent as a film forming agent. Furthermore, it can be used as adhesive in plastic bandages and as wetting agent for hard contact lenses, also used in food products and cosmetics. Povidone Povidone is a synthetic polymer consisting of linear 1-vinyl 2-pyrolidone groups, available in 4 viscosity grades identified by K value. It can be used as disintegrating agent, dissolution enhancer, coating agent, suspending agent and tablet binder. Povidone can form molecular adducts thus making it useful in the formulation of slow release solid dosage forms, solutions and parenterals. Example, povidone iodine is used as a topical disinfectant. The acceptable daily intake of povidone as per WHO is up to 25 mg per kg body weight. Polyethylene glycol, the general formula for PEG is where M represents average number of oxyethylene groups. It is used as coating agent, ointment and suppository base, plasticizer, solvent, lubricant. PEGs are used in various pharmaceutical formulations such as parenteral, ophthalmic, topical, oral and rectal preparations and in controlled release systems. PEG 300 and 400 in a concentration of 30% volume by volume are used as vehicle for parenteral dosage forms. For film coatings, PEG can be used alone for tablet film coating or as hydrophilic polishing materials. PEG also serve as plasticizers in microcapsules to avoid rupture of coating film when they are compressed into tablets. PEG 200 to 600 are liquids while PEG grades 1000 and greater are solid at room temperature. Acrylates Acrylate polymers called as eudragate are widely used coating agents in pharmaceutical dosage forms. They are synthetic, anionic and cationic polymers of dimethyl, aminoethyl, methacrylates, methacrylic acids and methacrylic acid esters in different ratios. Eudragate E RL, RS are specifically used film formers. Polymethacrylate polymers can be used to form matrix layers of transdermal drug delivery systems and can also be used in the preparation of novel gel formulations meant for rectal administration. 
large concentrations of 5 to 20 percent are used to control drug release from a tablet matrix. You drug it E served as a plain or insulating film former having solubility in gastric fluids at pH less than 5. You drug it RL, RS are capable of forming water insoluble film coats to obtain sustained release products. Films formed by Udragit RL are more permeable than those formed by Udragit RS. Udragit E is commercially available as 12.5% solution in propane to all acetone in ratio 60 to 40. Udragit RL and RS are copolymers of amino methacrylate with differing amount of ammonium group present. Udragit RL type A and RS Type B have 10% and 5% functional quaternary ammonium groups respectively. Udragit RL30D and RS30D are aqueous dispersions of acrylic acids and methacrylic acid esters and copolymers consisting of low concentrations of quaternary ammonium groups. The second part under film formers is functional coating. Functional film coatings, also called as modified release coatings, are applied to modify the dosage form so as to achieve a certain required release profiles of the API. Enteric coating is applied to protect API from acidic environment of GIT, preventing its release in the stomach. Gastric resistant polymers are also used to prepare enteric coatings. The enteric coated dosage form remain intact in the acidic environment of the GIT while rapidly dissolve at elevated pH of intestine. The applied enteric coating depends on the chemical structure of the polymer used. Polymers with carboxylic acid groups of pKa range 3 to 5 are the most efficient enteric polymers. Objectives for enteric coating are to protect acid labile drugs from acidic environment of gastric fluid to deliver API intended for local action in the intestine, to protect gastric distress or nausea that may be caused due to the irritation from a drug, to deliver drugs which absorb in the intestine in their most concentrated form, to provide delayed release part for repeat action of tablets. Now the very first example under functional coatings is polyvinyl acetate thalate PVAP is used as enteric coating material. It acts as viscosity modifier to produce enteric coats for products producing a robust film and also applied for sealing of tablet core before sugar coating process. Plasticizers can be added to produce a continuous homogeneous and non-cracking film. It dissolves along duodenum. The second example is cellulose acetate thalate cap is one of the frequently used enteric film coating material and serves other purpose as well, such as matrix binder for capsules and tablets. Cap coating dissolved in mildly acidic or neutral environment of a small intestine, resisting prolonged contact with gastric fluid. Cap is used in a concentration of 0.5 to 9% of weight of the core. A sealer subcoat should be applied to cap films as they are permeable to certain ionic matter like ammonium chloride and potassium iodide. Now again acrylates, a wide variety of polymethacrylates are available commercially differing in the applications and properties. Udragit L and S are the two widely used enteric coated polymers due to the solubility at pH 6 to 7. Protecting drug from releasing in gastric media. These are copolymers of methacrylic acid and methyl methacrylate, differing in the ratio of free carboxylic group to carboxylic acid ester group in a ratio of 1 is to 1 in a case of Udragit L type A and 1 is to 2 in Udragit S type B. They are available in a concentration of 12.5% in propane to all with or without plasticizers. Udragit S and FS solubilizes at pH greater than 7. Tablet coating can be done using S grade while flexible FS 30D dispersion are used to coat particles. Udragit L 30D55 is an aqueous polymeric dispersion of methacrylic acid and ethyl acrylate. 
films prepared dissolve above pH 5.5, releasing drugs in small intestine. Shellac. Shellac is the common word for refined form of lac, which is a natural polyester resin secreted by insects. Lac consists of mixture of alicyclic and aliphatic acids. The major components are gelaric, aluritic, and shelloic acid, and also butolic and carolic acids as well. It is used as film forming agent, coating agent, matrix forming agent, encapsulating agent, and modified release agent. Shellac has the advantage of low water vapor oxygen permeability. It has been accepted for use as food additive in USA, Europe, and Japan. HPMCP, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose phthalate, is cellulose consisting of methyl ether, 2 hydroxypropyl ether, or thylyl ester in place of hydroxyl groups. It is frequently used in oral formulations in the form of enteric coating material in granules and tablets. It dissolves in the upper intestine and is insoluble in gastric fluid. It is generally used in a concentration of 5 to 10 percent. HPMCP is available in various grades differing in the degrees of substitution and also physical properties graded as HP50, HP55 and HP55S. The number following HP designates the pH value of the solubility of polymer while S denotes grade with higher molecular weight which produces films that have greater resistance to cracking. The third part under film formers are plasticizers. Polymers employed for coating frequently results in brittle films which can cause crack formation, leading to the failure of functionality of the coating. Plasticizers are the agents added to prevent internal strain which lead to these defects and hence ensure suitable film properties. Plasticizers are low molecular weight non-volatile liquids with a highly boiling point and insoluble in water. Appropriate amount of plasticizer should be used so as to reduce the brittleness of the polymer efficiently and sticking of the product at the stage of processing or storage is avoided. Plasticizers are generally used in a concentration range of 5 to 30 percent weight by weight of the dry polymer weight basis. The plasticizer act by increasing the polymer's molecular mobility by interpenetrating with the segments of polymer chain, leading to decrease in cumulative intermolecular forces present along the polymer chains, causing reduction in cohesion and hence providing a more open structure of the polymer. Plasticizer can act internally or externally. Internal plasticizing refers to the alteration of the basic polymer by chemical modification causing variation in the physical properties of the polymer. External plasticizing refers to the addition of an external plasticizer such as non-volatile liquid or an another polymer which along with the primary polymeric film former alters the tensile strength, flexibility or adhesion characteristics of the resulting films. The last part under film formers is opaquent extenders. Opaquent extenders are very fine inorganic powders added to the coating solution to impart more pastel colors and enhance the film coverage. They mark the color of tablet core. Commonly used materials as opaquent extenders are titanium dioxide, magnesium carbonates, and magnesium oxide. Talc aluminum silicate, aluminum hydroxide. Now, moving towards the conclusion part of this module, pharmaceutical excipients deliver drugs through various desirable mechanisms such as immediate release, sustained release, and site-specific release. Advancement in particle engineering has also provided great avenues for designing the excipients with predefined functionality requirements. Co-processed excipients exemplifies this arduous innovation, wherein two excipients are co-processed to give products with enhanced functionality, retaining their favorable characteristics 
and avoiding their unfavorable properties. So, the knowledge of excipient properties is essential when designing or optimizing a dosage form. Thank you students.